Good morning, Stone Village, and happy Sunday. I hope that all of you are well and safe in this world. All is well in my world. The Lord be with you. And let us pray. Prepare us, O God, to hear your word through the scripture of this day. Confront us with your claim upon our lives. Clarify the choices we must make if our lives are to have meaning and purpose. Help us to respond to the one who came as the bread of life, so we may know life at its fullest and at its very best. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The reading today is from Luke chapter 23, verses 33 through 43. When they came to the place that is called the Skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by, watching. But the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself if he is the Messiah of God, God's chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine, and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you were under the same sentence of condemnation. And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus replied, truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I know what you are thinking. The crucifixion in November. Has his shoulder dislocation caused him cognitive impairment? No. I realize you have already heard the Good Friday story once this year. And once is generally enough. Plus, I suspect most of you are already in Christmas mode. So why do we need to hear the crucifixion narrative again? Maybe we need to hear it again because the injustice and violence revealed in today's gospel are an everyday occurrence in our lives and world today. Maybe we need to hear it again because we too often and too easily ignore, accommodate, and participate in violence. Maybe we need to hear it again because today, Christ the King Sunday, reminds us the reign of Christ, the way of Jesus, is a way of nonviolence. I wonder, what do you see as you watch Jesus on the cross? What feelings does it call forth within you? For me, I watch him die. I watch them cast lots to divide his clothing. I watch the leaders scoff at him, the soldiers mock him, and one of the criminals deride him. That's not, however, what most frightens me. What really frightens me is how Jesus responds to the injustice and violence. Jesus forgives them, all of them. He does not scoff, he does not mock, he does not deride. He does not judge or condemn. He does not retaliate or seek vengeance. He does not call them names. He doesn't yell at or swear at them. He doesn't express anger. He neither speaks nor acts with violence. He chooses instead to suffer violence and injustice rather than be the cause of more suffering and more violence. I wonder for you, how would you respond? Here and now in your gut, without judgment, would you choose quiet suffering or would you choose violence 
against those who were harming you. Today's gospel holds before us the image of a nonviolent Jesus. And honestly, it frightens me. Maybe it frightens you too. Maybe you and I should be afraid. Not of Jesus, of course, but of the violence. The violence, I suspect, we feel within ourselves. If you and I claim the mantle of Christian and follow the way of Jesus, then we also are to become nonviolent in our thoughts, our words, and our actions. If nonviolence is the way, then what does this mean for us? And, for example, the war in Gaza, the shooting in Lewiston, Maine, the way we drive, the words and tone we use on social media, the way we interact in public. Understand when I speak of violence, I'm not talking only about wars and violence leading to a felony charge. I'm speaking about all the ways we hurt ourselves and others, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. I'm speaking about the ways we diminish or negate the human dignity of ourselves and others by what we think, by what we say, and what we do. I don't believe nonviolence is something we achieve. It's a path we follow. Addressing violence in our lives and world is a spiritual journey. And it's something we grow into. And it's not only about the violence we do to others, but also the violence we do to ourselves. So perhaps this is where the journey of nonviolence must begin, within ourselves. Maybe the reason Jesus could be nonviolent toward those who inflicted pain and suffering upon him is because he was first nonviolent toward himself. Maybe the first step to addressing violence in our world today is to deal with the violence we inflict on ourselves. I wonder, what violence are you inflicting on yourself today? Do you ever put yourself down, call yourself names, berate, shame, or ridicule yourself? What are the regrets, the guilts, and missed opportunities with which you still beat yourself up over? Are you denying yourself the gift of forgiveness? Here and now, how do you feel about yourself, your life, your body, and your soul? In what ways are you hurting yourself physically, emotionally, and spiritually? Additionally, I wonder, can you be gentle with yourself? and offer yourself some compassion. Every week I remind you multiple times, you are God's beloved. Do you believe it? Do you live it? What would it mean for your life to claim you are God's beloved child with whom God is well pleased? What if you began recalibrating your life to listen to a voice of self-love rather than the self-critical voice of admonishment and hate? What would it be like to live with unconditional love toward yourself? How might you start to make peace with yourself? Just imagine if we let unconditional love toward ourselves and peacemaking with ourselves be the starting point for our relationships with others, or as Jesus put it, loving our neighbors as ourselves. We might begin to recognize them 
as sacred as ourselves, in their hopes and needs to be as valid and important as our own. We might feel less need to prove, defend, or justify ourselves. It might take our fear or anger down a notch or two. If this were to happen, how might it change the way we think, the words we choose, or the things we do? I don't think I've ever said, <laughs> while driving, Oh, that beloved child of God just cut me off. I have, however, referred to that child of God who cut me off as a son of a... Mm. Yes, multiple times. Innumerable times. <laughs> and so what if we start small and begin to replace our everyday ordinary acts of violence with nonviolence? Nonviolent driving, nonviolent social media posting, nonviolent inner dialogue, nonviolent self assessment, nonviolent communication. Those feel like good, easy places to begin. What if nonviolence toward ourselves and one another was our vision for the future? What would nonviolence look like and mean for you, your life, today? What would it offer you? And what would it ask of you? Of course, I know as a community, we cannot eliminate violence from our world. Yet I also know we have the power to stop adding to the violence we see, we experience in the world today. We have that power not to add to the violence. And so on this Christ the King Sunday, let us remember and lean into the way of Christ and make this world a more peaceful and loving place for all. Thanks be to God. Amen. I give thanks to God for each of you. And I pray this day you bear witness to the love of God in this world. Bear witness to the love of God to those to whom love is a stranger. They will find in you a generous and a loving friend. In the name of Christ Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I love you, stoners. I hope that you have a wonderful Sunday. Uh, as a reminder, we are back to... 10 a.m. worship on Sundays. Uh, that is also the time that we will be offering SVC Kids. So Sundays, 10 a.m. All the fun happens for Stone Village. Uh, again, love you lots. Talk to you soon. Bye.